A clarification of the Novax No Ride policy in Metro Manila. The government says workers who have yet to take their COVID-19 shots can still use public transportation. The policy took effect yesterday and made it difficult for a number of commuters to get to work. Our Tristan Adala joins us live. Tristan? Yeah, Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello clarifies that essential workers are exempted from the no vax, no ride policy. This means that unvaccinated workers should not be barred from riding public utility vehicles. The Labor Chief says the policy is, quote, non-absolute and alert level 3 guidelines allow the movement of the unvaccinated but only for essential activities. For our workers, nothing because they are rendering essential services. Pag-iinto mo mga yan, paano gagalaw ang ating mga, ang ating mga negosyo? Pag walang negosyo, walang ekonomya. So, luckily, uh, exempted po ang ating mga workers. The Transportation Department agrees with Bello and says unvaccinated workers must present proof that they're going to work by showing their company ID or certificate of employment. Transport officials say enforcers of the no vax no ride policy are aware of the exemption. But some dispatchers in terminal say they have yet to be informed of the guidelines. Land Transportation and Franchising and Regulatory Board Director Zona Tamayo tells CNN Philippines that they extend assistance to those who are rejected from using public transport that are not covered by the exemption. Uh, surprisingly, those po na hindi natin inalaw, um, agreed naman po. Some even uh, volunteered to be to have their second dose already on the, yesterday. We so we have to assist them, especially those um, along uh, Commonwealth. We have to um, turn them over to the task force discipline for them to be assisted for their vaccination. So relatively, po in general, um, the passengers who don't have that vaccination cards or are still not fully vaccinated. Um, understood the policy that we are now implementing for public transportation. But calls to stop the no vax, no ride policy continue. Senator Kiko Pangilinan wants an end to what he calls a quote, the Raconian policy that burdens the poor and those without their own vehicles. Former Senator Cheese Escudero also wants to scrap the policy, citing no legal grounds for it. Apart from workers, the transportation department adds that unvaccinated individuals or partially vaccinated individuals can still use public transport for buying groceries. Those with medical condition who cannot be vaccinated must show their medical certificates. And for unvaccinated workers who will have a hard time or encounter problems for public transportation, they can approach their leader of the enforcers and remind them of the exemptions. Back to you, Tia. Tristan Nadalo there reporting. The health department reporting 28,471 new COVID-19 infections, the first time in almost a week, the daily average fall falls below 30,000. Health Secretary Francisco Duque had said the COVID-19 growth rate in the country is slowing down. He explained the average daily reported cases only increased by 71% with nearly 35,000 infections from January 11 to 17, compared to up to the 725% growth rate from December 28 to January 3, and the 689% increase the following week. One of the Mr. President, but we still don't know kung sisi papa ba ito muli or patuloy na magplato. Tapos hopefully baba ba siya. Duque, however, cautions the country is still at critical risk. The health department also says 18 provinces and cities under alert level 3 are showing an upward trend of COVID-19 cases, similar to the spike here in Metro Manila. We're showing you the list on your screens, most of them in the Visayas and Mindanao. Local governments in these areas are asked to prepare their health facilities as more people are expected to get sick because of low vaccine coverage of less than 40%. Meanwhile, province under alert level two are asked to accelerate their vaccination efforts to reduce transmission and prevent hospitalization of patients in case of a spike. DOH data show Sulu, Maguindanao, Basilan, and Tawi-Tawi has less or have less than 20% vaccine coverage. Ang pagtaas ng kaso sa ibang rehiyon ay hindi magiging isolated case. Ito po ay nakakaapekto sa lahat ng kalapit na rehiyon. Kasama po dyan ang NCR Plus at ang kabuuan ng Luzon 
na may mas malaking pagtaas ng kaso ngayon kumpara nung Delta experience natin nung September 2021. Vaccination of children against COVID-19 will begin next month. Vaccine SAR Carlito Galvez says the plan is to vaccinate over 15 million children aged 5 to 11. 780,000 Pfizer vaccines formulated for that age group will age group will arrive on January 31st. Another 1.6 million doses will be delivered on February 7th. The Food and Drug Administration says three manufacturers have also applied for emergency use authorization amendments for pediatric vaccination. These are Covaxin for 2 to 18 years old, Sinovac for 3 to 7 years old and 12 to 17 years and Sinopharm for three to seven years old. So far, there are now over eight million vaccinated minors. The government is utilizing big pharmacies and private clinics to administer more COVID-19 booster doses. Officials say the Res Bakuna sa mga botika program will help ease pressure on vaccination sites manned by local governments and the Department of Health. At least half a million doses need to be administered daily in the country to achieve the target of giving boosters to 72 million Filipinos this year. Mr. President, this is our way forward to hand over the responsibility of the vaccination from the national government center to its complete trip devolution to the LGUs and the private sector in the preparation for the future commercialization of the vaccine. So, mangyayari po si Secretary Anyo at saka po ang private sector na po ang mamumuno po ng mga vaccination program po natin through the LGUs. The pilot run will begin on Thursday in seven locations across Metro Manila. You can see that list on your screens. Now, vaccine experts, again, stressing the importance of getting an additional COVID-19 vaccine dose as the highly contagious Omicron variant spreads rapidly. An infectious disease expert says a third shot can give protection as high as 93% against the virus and is up to 96% effective against hospitalization. Nakikita namin ngayon yung mga nagka-severe. Uh, these are mostly unvaccinated. And there are a few of those who are, who are fully vaccinated but has not received the, the, the booster. No? So to talaga makikita mo yung disparity between getting the severe infection and getting the milder infection. Persistence of antibody responses uh, in the context of Omicron is still ongoing. So we still don't have definitive answers. Um, although there have been some suggestion, uh, you know, the persistence of antibodies will be as a same or longer than the, in, in the boosters, huh, will be the same or longer than those who are the second dose. So we could expect a, a much longer uh, protection uh, compared to just having two doses. Meanwhile, early data from Israel suggests a fourth dose of Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine can increase antibodies, but it may still not be enough to prevent breakthrough infections caused by Omicron. Researchers note that the level of antibodies needed against the variant may be too high for both vaccines, even if they still performed well. Last month, the Middle Eastern nation pioneered a trial of the additional booster in healthy participants ahead of its rollout to those more at risk of getting COVID-19. Now, despite being the early global leader in coronavirus vaccination, Israel is struggling to inoculate children. The vast majority of those under age 11 are still not immunized. And as CNN's Hadas Gold tells us, hospitals are seeing a surge in cases among the youth. For months, this children's COVID ward at Sheba Hospital in central Israel sat empty. Now it's reopened and nurses are suiting up again as health experts estimate that COVID cases in children will soon surge to tens of thousands per day. Dr. Itai Pesach, director of the Safra Children's Hospital at Sheba, says that during the last wave, they had at their peak around 15 children in the COVID ward. We already broke that number during this week, and I'm sure it's going to be higher because the rate of uh, positive uh, people and positive children around the country is uh, still rising. <laughs> But something is different about this wave. Most of the kids in the COVID ward weren't admitted because of COVID. We found them to be positive while we were treating them from other, for other illnesses. So the COVID actually complex, uh, complicates a little bit the uh, conditions. We have to care for them, but otherwise it poses no significant medical risk for them. Dr. Pesach is especially worried about the long-term ramifications of so many positive cases. 
children with even asymptomatic COVID infections sometimes develop a debilitating disorder called PIMS, Pediatric Inflammatory Multisystem Syndrome. If uh, Omicron does cause PIMS, the vast, the huge number of, of positive cases that we see would definitely bring a wave of PIMS later, and PIMS is a significant disorder. Uh, we know that the vaccine protects from PIMS in, very good, uh, in a very good way. So uh, going back to the vaccine, uh, if most of the kids were vaccinated, we wouldn't have to worry about what's going to happen in a month now. But less than 15% of Israeli children aged 5 to 11 are vaccinated. As health officials try to get more life-saving shots into arms, Show the, the education system is soldiering on. Here in Israel, we are absolutely sure that sco open schools are the best option, even under most difficult circumstances. And our policy is very clear to keep schools open under any circumstances. At the Gretz Elementary School in Tel Aviv, open windows for ventilation, masks, and a new kind of homework. Because of an intense demand for testing, whether at home or performed by professionals, the Israeli government has decided to give each student in the education system three free at-home antigen tests. The school's COVID coordinator, Marit Khaviv, can barely keep up with her students' positive tests and quarantines. It's, it's crazy. It's like a wave. It's a tsunami. It's not even a, just a regular wave. It's a real tsunami that just flushes everything. That's it. But she agrees schools must stay open, despite the risks. I think it would be easier to shut down schools, yes, but it's a problem. I'm a mother. I have two boys, and I know how hard for them it is to stay at home. And I think it's more important that the kids will stay in some kind of a regular routine, come back to school every day, see their friends, and it's, I think it's much more important. And so the children in Israel continue on, testing and hoping that they can make it through the tsunami. Hadas Gold, CNN, Tel Aviv. In other headlines overseas, Moderna should have data on a vaccine targeting Omicron by March, according to its CEO. The pharmaceutical firm also working in a single dose that covers both flu and COVID-19 to help address concerns about getting separate shots. Moderna isn't planning to have the combined dose ready until late next year, and even then it will only be available in some countries. Australia reports its deadliest day since the pandemic began. The country listed at least 74 fatalities on Monday, including 36 in New South Wales, 16 in Queensland, and the rest in Victoria, which also saw record hospitalizations last week. Other states and territories have yet to report figures. Australia's previous record daily death toll was 57. Beijing vowing to join hands with the Philippines to resolve South China Sea disputes. China State or Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi made the statement during the fifth Manila Forum for Philippines-China relations. Wang said issues should be addressed properly and not affect bilateral ties. Manila logged a flurry of diplomatic protests against Beijing last year, which continued to assert maritime claims in the West Philippine Sea, despite a 2016 Hague ruling invalidating them. Coming up on Newsnight, authorities identify a fourth inmate who bolted the maximum security compound of the new Bilibid prison in Mutinlupa. And the poll body is set to begin printing the final ballots for the May elections. More when we return. was the ultimate, but there's more. Dahil tinawag ko ako ng Panginoon for a major, major purpose. To guide the youth, help communities, and to bring others closer to Him. Kaya I take care of my health through proper diet, exercise, and MX3 capsule. I am ready to serve. Kasi para sa Panginoon, hindi lang ako fourth runner-up. First place ako sa puso niya. Mahalagang paalala, ang MX3 capsule ay hindi gamot at hindi dapat kaminig panggamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Kay dami mo 
Ngayon pa ba susukuan Kung lahat tayo'y nabibigatan Sama-sama natin tong lagpasan Sa bawat trabal Hinebra tayo At sa pag-ahon Hinebra tayo Sa huling patak, sa huling patak Ng bagong tapal Pagsubot mo ay malalampasan Sasama sa huling patak Tumitindi ang bagong tapal Malalaban hanggang sa huling patak Para sa pangarap, para sa pamilya, para sa bayan Welcome back to Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. The Bureau of Corrections reports another missing inmate of the new Bilibid prison and maybe among those who managed to escape on Monday. Our George Kitas joins us. George, what do we know about this fourth fugitive? Via the Bureau of Corrections identified the fourth escapee as Chris Ablas, who was convicted for robbery with homicide. This means two convicts are still on the loose, Ablas and Draculu Falcon. Bureau, uh, the Bucor, describes these detainees as armed and dangerous. Yesterday, two of the inmates, Pacifico Adlawan and Ar Ar Arwin Bayo, were killed during a supposed encounter with authorities. Metro Manila Police Chief Major General Vic Danao has ordered an intensive manhunt operation, alerting all units on the ground to help in the immediate arrest of the remaining two. The Bucor has offered a 100,000 peso bounty for information that would lead to the whereabouts of Ablas and Falcon. Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara wants to know how the inmates managed to escape the maximum security compound and how they were able to get firearms and other weapons. Guevara ordered the National Bureau of Investigation to look into the jailbreak. He also wants administrative sanctions against Bucor officials who will be found guilty of gross neglect on duty. Yeah. George, uh, speaking of the NBI uh, drug suspect, Gerwin uh, Espinosa, also trying to escape from the agency's detention facility. What's the latest on this? That's right, Pia. Justice Secretary uh, Guevara says they will ask the court to transfer drug suspect Gerwin Espinosa to a facility with more stringent security, such as the Marine Barracks in uh, 4th Bonifacio. The NBA earlier reported Espinosa and two other detainees planned to escape their uh, detention facility through an air vent. Espinosa has been under the NBI's custody since his uh, repatriation from the United Arab Emirates on 2016. Authorities asked uh, the court to place Espinosa under the NBI's watch due to security risks. Since his father, former Albuera late Mayor Rolando Espinosa, was killed during a police operation inside the Leyte Provincial Jail in Baybay City, also in 2016. Back to you. George Cleet is there reporting. The Commission on Elections will still include the name of presidential aspirant former Senator Bongbong Mancos in the ballot for the 2022 polls despite pending cases against his bid. Comlex spokesperson James Jimenez says the poll body has already prepared the ballot phase for the elections. He notes there will be 10 presidential contenders, 9 vice presidential aspirants, 64 senatorial hopefuls, and 177 party lists on the ballot. Comlex will begin the printing of over 67 million ballots this Wednesday and expects to finish the process by April. Paul Body held a virtual walkthrough today. Kung bibilangin po natin yung araw magmula ng uh, January 20 ay hanggang mga first week of April lang po yan, kaya na sana. But again, uh, we are realistic in anticipating uh, contingencies including na po yung uh, COVID surge and uh, infection of our workers. Comlec plans to help uh, or to tap reserve workers should existing manpower go on quarantine because of COVID-19.
Well, the Commission on Elections eyeing to stage national debates in February ahead of the 2022 polls. Comlex spokesperson James Jimenez says the poll body is crafting a memorandum of understanding with aspirants for the ground rules. And we'll have uh, one, de- one set of debates per month, February, March, and April. We'll have back-to-back debates, presidential and vice presidential debates, one after the other. The Comlec earlier said the debates will be under a hybrid setup. Candidates will attend in person and the audience will watch virtually. A look at what some presidential aspirants are up to. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno says the Manila Zoo will open its doors for the COVID vaccination of children and senior citizens tomorrow. Senator Manny Pacquiao reiterates the need to increase the minimum salary of health workers to 50,000 pesos a month. And the campaign against the return of the Marcoses and martial law or karma slammed former Senator Bombo Marcos after he pledged to increase the funding of the anti-communist task force. Karma says his father, former President Ferdinand Marcos also used the military and tactics such as red tagging to maintain his dictatorial rule. Bongbo has yet to respond, or the younger Marcos has yet to respond to the group statement. Straight head golf star Yuka Sasso is set to wear Japan's colors in her next tournament, and we get a preview of some exciting new shows, including South Korea's take on Netflix's Money Heist. Keep it here on CNN Philippines. Your voice, our future. Manupo, a traditional Filipino gesture, a sign of respect to our elders, the power of the word please and thank you. More than just pleasantries, they're necessary to show respect and appreciation, much like wearing a mask. CNN Philippines, the Philippine Basketball Association is set to hold a board meeting next week to decide on the fate of its season-ending Governor's Cup. The Import Lace Conference was put to a halt last January 3rd. Under Alert Level 3, sports leagues are prohibited from staging live games except those under a full bubble setup. But PBA Commissioner Willie Marshall is hopeful they can resume under a home venue home scheme after getting the nod of the Games and Amusements Board. Uusap ko si Chairman Mitra last Sunday, Sunday uh, morning, na sinabi niya na nag, nag-endorse na sila ng letter sa IATF na payagan tayo maglaro ng tinatawag na ng Type C bubble, yung home venue home. Malamang, sa tumataas tong, itong Omicron na to, tapos kung papala rin tayo magsimula, sigurado, magdadagdag tayo ng mga protocols at pagsasabihan natin ng mga players 
pati baka mga penalties, mga fines, baka may mga dadagdag tayo, itataas tayo. Overseas, the Ladies Professional Golf Association, or LPGA, now recognizing Yuka Sasso as a Japanese athlete. The reigning U.S. Women's Open champion previously had dual citizenship and represented the Philippines, but Sasso chose to become a Japanese citizen last year. The LPGA website now features the Japanese flag alongside the athlete's name. Meanwhile, tennis champion Novak Djokovic may miss out on more global tournaments, including the next Madrid Open. The Spanish Prime Minister says any athlete competing there must comply with Spain's health rules. This was echoed by France, meaning the tennis star may also be barred from the French Open. Djokovic was recently deported from Australia for being unvaccinated against COVID-19. With this, he was unable to defend his Australian Open title. And catching netizens' attention, streaming platforms are giving fans a glimpse of some much-anticipated shows. Marvel fans take a look at this newly unveiled poster for Moon Knight, starring Oscar Isaac. The trailer also released today hints at a darker, thrilling series set for streaming on Disney Plus March 30th. This chaos in you. Plus an exciting teaser for the Korean adaptation of the hit Netflix series Money Heist. The video that has since gone viral reveals the show's title, Money Heist Korea Joint Economic Area. Here's a sneak peek. The teaser also shows off some cast members. Squid Game's Park hae Su plays Berlin, while Yu ji takes on the role of the professor. And before we go, movie award season ramping up overseas. CNS David Daniel has the latest in the Hollywood Minute. Where is it? Where is who? Your boss. My boss. Clearly, you don't know me. Big wins for The Harder They Fall. The Western took top honors at the African American Film Critics Association Awards, winning Best Picture, Best Ensemble, Best Director, and Best Music. King Richard also received four honors from the group, Best Actor for Will Smith, Best Supporting Actress for Ingenue Ellis, Breakout Actor for Sonia Sidney, and Best Emerging Director. The awards will be presented at a March 2nd ceremony in Los Angeles. 25 years since our first run together. 1900 and nothing. Meanwhile, The Power of the Dog won Best Picture honors from the North Dakota film critics. That's notable because it's the Netflix film's 21st Best Picture prize, breaking the streamer's previous record of 20, set by 2018's Roma. No Netflix film has yet won the Oscar for Best Picture. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no. Apparently, they do talk about Bruno in the United Kingdom. We Don't Talk About Bruno from Encanto leads the UK's official chart update and is one of three Encanto songs set to hit the UK Top 20 Singles Chart when it's updated on Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And that is it for tonight. I'm Pia Ontiveros for Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. This program is brought to you by... This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. RBN Radio Philippines Network. Radio Ronda. DCRL Batak. Member Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas.
helping Filipinos navigate through a raging pandemic and now seeking answers from the Commission on Elections over an alleged data breach. Vice President Lenny Robredo juggles her time to personally address these top of mind national concerns while making her case to the Filipino people to bid or in a bid for the highest position in the land come May 9th, 2022. We now have the Vice President herself for an up close uh, interview here on Newsnight. Good evening, ma'am, and thank you very much uh, for joining us. Let's begin with this, uh, uh, the pandemic, of course, uh, that is really top of mind. Uh, uh, we understand that you don't uh, like the, uh, or, or appreciate the government uh, policy of no vaccination, uh, no ride. Uh, as a matter of fact, you say what is important is to ramp up vaccination. What we need to do is uh, to inform and incentivize. Um, uh, can you explain more about that? You know, Pia, we have been having uh, Vaccine Express in many parts of the country. And from our experience, um, hindi kailangan takotan eh. Uh, from our experience, kailangan mo lang talaga tsagaan to educate people. Uh, you have to make sure that um, yung vaccination accessible to them. And, and pangatlo talaga to incentivize. I, I will give you a very specific um, example. Uh, we did the vaccination in Kappa Starlock. Uh, for the Aita community. Before we went, we were already being warned that ayaw ng mga, ayaw ng Aita community magpabakuna. Pero when we went, talagang, ano, uh, we worked with the local government unit, sinundo sila, um, nagbigay kami ng mga food packs, nagbigay kami ng mga um, other incentives. And, and, and you know, the turnout was very, very good. And we have not, we have not just done that in Kapas, but we have been doing that elsewhere. So, so para sa akin, dapat sana yung vaccination, hindi siya lalabas na paparusahan ka kung hindi ka bakunado. Pero talagang we go out of our way and exert our best effort to really educate, to really uh, bring bring the vaccination uh, where people are and provide incentives. You brought up this issue about bringing the vaccination to people, no? Um, and, and that is something I remember uh, in late December when I interviewed uh, Charlie Galvez, and he was saying that uh, that could be a log logistical challenge for the LGUs in far, lalo na sa far, far flung areas. Um, can you talk about that? Totoong logistical challenge, Pia, pero government uh, should not do it alone. Um, our Vaccine Express uh, initiatives. Um, we were able to do a lot of things because we have been partnering with the private sector. Um, sa, sa amin, Pia, hindi siya naging mahirap. Hindi siya naging mahirap because um, all our initiatives has really been a collaboration, not just, uh, not just between um, our office and the private sector, but also with the local government unit. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, about a week, was that a week or two weeks ago, I remember you were very upset with uh, uh, allegations on social media that one of your daughters had skipped or, or you know, cut quarantine uh, or, or something or other. And uh, also, um, uh, after Christmas, before New Year's, ang daming uh, nagalit doon sa poblacion girl and yung isa pa no pero nakasuhan din naman uh, yung dalawa um, the, the question here is um, how do you know how should we move forward on something like this uh, when there are well uh, alleged blatant uh, disregard for the rules uh, you know how do we appeal to Filipinos uh, to our citizens to you know uh, para bang parang integrity yan eh uh, pwede na, you know eh, Integrity is what you do even when no one is looking, right? Ito, et, Pia, um, da, dapat natuto tayo from the lessons na yung, yung Poblacion Girl incident um, gave us. Um, nung, nung sumabog yun, marami yung naglabasan. Apparently, it has been happening already. So gusto ko sabihin, may problema tayo sa implementation. Uh, kasi yung, yung, yung protocols naman are in place. Uh, kaya, kaya sa akin, Pia, kailangan, um, we, we, should, we should have learned from that lesson kasi it was very costly for us. So, so yung sa akin, uh, malibawa, ito personal experience, Pia, na yung mga anak ko uh, traveled um, from the US, uh, dumating sila on the 20th, uh, naswab sila on the 24th, lumabas yung kanilang results on the 25th, sa, sa tatlo kong anak, isa yung nag-positive. 
So my daughter was telling me na tinawagan siya ng Bureau of Quarantine. Um, um, the, the protocols were explained to her. Ang advice sa kanya, uh, isolation facility. So ano naman, klaro. Klaro yung mga protocols. So after, after uh, checking out of the hotel, she went straight to the isolation facility. And nun nasa isolation facility, meron mga protocols in place. She was still required to, um, to, uh, ano to, to do home quarantine for another six days. So kung nasusunod lang sana ito, Pia, maayos lahat. Halimbawa yung sa anak ko, walang nahawa. Walang nahawa in the family. Um, Na-control yung spread of the virus. The main okay. reason why nangyari yung Poblacion Girl incident, kasi, kasi may, may nagsiskip ng protocols na kung hindi sumabog, uh, hindi ma, ma, ano to, ma-reveal yung mga gaps in the implementation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is also why uh, kinasuhan ng uh, several people and... Uh... Uh, groups now, but ma'am, uh, my my last question before we go to a break, you know, if you were to win the election, what is the first thing you would do to address uh, the pandemic on day one, uh, June thirty, uh, you know, minutes after taking your oath, for example, if you were to win? Ako, 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 Pia, talagang yung pinaka first agenda is freedom from COVID. If we are able to control the <clears throat> transmission of the virus, it will set everything else in motion. So ito yung first major step towards full recovery. And then we need to ensure the availability of jobs and livelihoods as we begin to make our way forward in the new normal. Um, I think in, in, in mid-November, we put out a, a, um, our kalayaan sa COVID plan already. And in December, mm. we put out our hanap buhay para sa lahat. It's available sa lenirobredo.com. And yung sinasabi natin, the core principle of this plan is ensuring that progress is felt in the communities. And really, that begins with jobs. Yung, yung kalayaan sa COVID, um, kabahagi doon yung, yung, yung getting the economy back on its feet, making sure that the healthcare system will be resilient moving forward, and yung education, grabe yung damage to, to the education of our children. Two years na pia, mm. two years na na hindi talaga nakakapasok yung marami sa ating right. mga mag- so talagang ito yung mga mga priorities natin. Mm-hmm. And since uh, elections na pinag-usapan, ma'am, let's jump from uh, the pandemic to politics. Uh, but we're going to do that uh, after taking this very short break. Keep it here on CNN Philippines. Welcome back. This is Up Close with uh, presidential aspirant VP Lenny Robredo. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Vice President, uh, I remember the April 2016 CNN Philippines VP debate. Uh, you said, and I paraphrase, I will be the last woman standing. Can you still say that today uh, with two huge factors? Uh, a very popular, you know, if you look at the pre campaign surveys, a very popular Bombo Marcos and the pandemic. Can you say the same thing right now? Most definitely, Pia. Una-una, I am the only woman candidate again, um, just as I was uh, when I ran for the vice presidency. And number two, my again, my record will speak for itself. Ang dami kong binagdaanan in the last um, five and a half years that I was vice president. And nakatayo pa din ako ngayon, Pia. At lumalaban pa din. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, in your estimation, is Bongbong Marcos some sort of a Teflon candidate? Kasi parang ang dami ng binato sa kanya. Kanyang pa rin, nangunguna pa rin sa survey. Ano ko si Pia? I, 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 it's many different things. Unang-una, um, yung, yung kanyang effort to really um, revise. To really revise the, the way people, um, par- parang to really, not, not just history, uh, not, not just to really revise history, pero pabanguhin yung, pabanguhin yung pagtingin ng tao um, sa mga Marcoses. Yung initiative na to ginawa way, way back, uh, even before he ran for the vice presidency. And over the years, relentless talaga yung effort na gawin yun. And, and ngayon, nire-reap niya yung benefits noon. And na-own niya talaga yung social media, Pia. In fact, it's one of the more difficult challenges that we are facing. 
Because alam natin, sobrang dami ng fake accounts ngayon. Alam natin na social media is working on algorithms. So nasasaturate talaga yung mga distribution channels. Na yung tao hindi na nabibigyan ng, ng enough na opportunity to really know what is right and what is wrong. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. kailangan doble talaga yung effort to make it known to people what is true and what is not. Mm-hmm. Do you think or should he be disqualified or do you want him disqualified? Because many of those who believe in you and will vote for you want him disqualified uh, for reasons uh, uh, that, that, were, that were used to file those DQ cases against him or the petitions to cancel his COC. Or do you want to slug it out with him Uh, this May 2022. I remember you said you wanted na yung kalabanin talaga siya. Ako, ako, Pia, ako ayoko mag-comment sa disqualification case. But if you are, if you were to ask me, mas gusto ko talunin natin siya sa eleksyon para matapos na ito. Mas gusto niyong talunin siya sa eleksyon. Para, anong matapos na ito? Mat- ano yung ito doon? Y- yung, yung narrative kasi, Pia, ako na alala mo. Yung, yung narrative, um, kung naalala mo, nung natalo ko siya sa eleksyon, dahil inuun niya yung social media, ang dami naniniwala na dinaya ko siya. Kahit, mm. kahit ilang beses pa ako nanalo sa Supreme Court, eto yung narrative na pinupush niya. So kailangan talagang talunan siya sa susunod na eleksyon para mm. once and for all mahinto na yung ginagawa niya na pagpapapaniwala sa tao. Nung narrative hmm. na gusto niyang ipush. Are there any regrets, ma'am, uh, at this point in time that the four of you, you, Ping Lakson, Isko Moreno, and Manny Pacquiao didn't get your act together in a way or didn't unite, you know, didn't, uh, uh, hindi kayo nag-solidify? I, I would have to admit I was frustrated at first because I was very hopeful. I was very hopeful when I started talking to the many different candidates na we would unite um, behind uh, one one common candidate. Pero regret siguro pia hindi. Kasi mm. um, ako, I exerted all effort. And okay. after the talks okay. failed, uh, ako, I, to a very large extent, I was successful in 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 uniting not the not, not the presidential candidates but the the very many groups that are behind our candidacy now. Marami kami, maraming ngayon mga volunteers, Pia, na iba-iba yung pinanggalingan. So sabi ko, if I was net not able to unite the presidential candidates, at least ito, uh, yung tao, yung sinungsubukan natin na uh, um, i-unite pang lalo. Pag-usapan natin sandaling-sandali lang yung uh, kampanya because uh, you know there was this announcement that you have this new campaign slogan. So very briefly talk about that. But at the same time, talk about uh, that uh, previous effort to uh, kumbaga, juxtapose you against President Duterte as the Tatay Digong. Uh, and then you were going to be the uh, parabang mother figure, the nanay, the ina. Uh, but that didn't work out ba? Yung naging problema namin when we started was that we were not prepared for the deluge of volunteers. And tung nag, nag, on, nagkaroon ng onslaught of volunteers, our first, um, our first decision was to uh, give them as much elbow room as possible, as much independence as possible, to chart the kind of campaign that they want. Yun, yun sana yung... Yun sana yung gusto natin. Uh, really to make it an honest to goodness people pe- people's movement. Ah, pero yung naging problema lang non Pia kasi i- dahil iba-iba yung pinanggalingan ng mga grupo, iba, kanya-kanya din yung messaging na ginagawa. So, so yung nanay was a, an initiative of one group. Uh, yung Let Lenny Lead was an initiative of another group. Uh, iba-iba yung mga messaging na pinupush. So ang nangyari dito, parang ang, ang observation, naging sobrang mixed yung signals, diluted yung messaging. That is why in December, we had to decide on just one that will encapsulate everything that we want to uh, convey. Okay. In the middle of... Uh... Uh, this uh, investigation that's going to happen on this alleged uh, Comelec uh, hacking um, incident, uh, are you still confident about the elections? Because as a candidate, you submit yourself uh, to, to the process, to the system. Uh, you won in, in 2016. It's the same, practically the same system. So, andyan pa, pa, pa po ba yung kumpiyansa ninyo? 
Ako, it's worrying. Ako, 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 I have to admit, Pia, na it's worrying. That's why the first day that we learned of an alleged hacking incident, naglabas kami ng statement ni Senator Kiko um, urging Comelec to conduct a full-blown investigation and to really ensure na yung integrity ng system is in place. Kasi gaya na sabi mo, um, syempre cause for worry siya kung na-hack ito kasi unang-una ano, kung, kung i-hack, ano yung, ano yung dahilan. So kung ang dahilan is to meddle with the um, you know with with the integrity of the elections it is worrying not just for us candidates pero syempre for the electorate kasi yung hmm. gusto lang naman natin masiguro na yung boses ng tao yung madadala so yung sa akin um, it is enough reason for us to stay vigilant kailangan talaga tutukan natin yung buong proseso just to make sure na kung ano yung um, will ng tao, yun yung lalabas during the elections. Yes, that is the most important. Ma'am, we have a minute to go and I know this may not sound like a very fair question to you, but it's so important, especially because you know people's attention spans are so short and we don't always have uh, the luxury of time to explain everything. But there are three big things here. One, the economy, reviving the economy. Two, uh, the uh, uh, the war on corruption and the war on drugs, which were the centerpieces of the Duterte administration. So my question here would be, and you know, if you can, you know, <laughs> put it in one <laughs> one minute capsule, what is it that you're going to do in the first 100 days? One to revive the economy. Two to uh, 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 con- well, I, I'm sure you want to continue this war on corruption. And three, you know, how are you going to reimagine this war on drugs? Ako, ako yung number one, Pia, naglabas na ako. Naglabas na ako yung hanap buhay para sa lahat and COVID, uh, kalayaan sa COVID plan. Uh, nandun yung lahat na detalye. But the, at the core of a more long-term view are the goals na stopping corruption, investing in the Filipino, taking advantage of available technology. So parang it should encapsulate everything after uh, we control the we, we control the um, we control the pandemic. Pero yung, yung sa drugs, I will pursue it with as much vigor. Pero yung programa, hindi gaya ng nangyayari ngayon. When I was ICAG chair for 18 days, I already submitted a, a comprehensive plan on how to do it. And pag nabigyan ako ng pagkakataon, yun yung gagawin ko. Uh, meron na ako nito ng point by point, step by step, kung paano gagawin. But, but the war on drugs should be pursued with as much vigor. Pero absent what has been happening now na maraming pataya. Vice President Lenny Robredo, presidential aspirant for May 2022. Ma'am, thank you so much for the time you gave us tonight. Salamat po, ma'am. Thank you, Pia.